Here at SYB, we post a lot of EMF testing videos. To show you that our products really work, and to show you how to perform these tests for yourself, so you don't just have to take our word for it. Today, I want to dive a little bit deeper with a video guide on how to perform EMF testing for yourself. Before we dig in, I want to answer the question some people have. Why should I test? EMF is a force that is increasingly pervasive in our lives, and it can be harmful to your health. But at the same time, EMF is invisible. You can't see, touch, smell, hear, or taste it. So the best way, actually the only way, to know how much of this stuff you're exposed to and where it's coming from is to test for yourself. And it's also the only way to know if your EMF protection products, like the ones I make and sell, are actually working. So if EMF is important to you, it's really important skill to have. To begin, you'll need an EMF meter. And to select an EMF meter, you need to understand that there are different kinds of EMF radiation that come from our technology. There's radio frequency, which is emitted by wireless technology, like cell phones and Wi-Fi. And there's low frequency, which is emitted by anything that runs on AC power, like appliances and power lines. Low frequency, also called ELF, has two separate fields, a magnetic field and an electric field. To measure each of these different kinds of EMF, you need a different EMF meter. To measure radio frequency radiation, you'll need what's called a power density meter. To measure the low frequency magnetic fields, you'll need what is called a Gauss meter. And to measure the low frequency electric fields, you'll need an AC electric field meter. So to measure all these kinds of EMF, you really need three separate meters, a power density meter, a Gauss meter, and an electric field meter. Fortunately, there's a company that makes a nice meter that measures all three, reasonably accurately, for a reasonable price. It's called a Trifield TF2, and it's what I often recommend to customers. If you want some other options, you'll want to check out my ebook on home EMF testing, which has additional meter recommendations. Now, let's get started. So you take your Trifield and set it to the correct setting. Set it to RF if you want to measure radio frequency. Set it to MAG if you want to measure low frequency magnetic fields. Or set it to ELEC if you want to measure low frequency electric fields. You'll see that for the magnetic and electric settings, you have the choice to use either standard or weighted settings. I recommend using the weighted settings as those are more relevant for human radiation exposures. So turn your trifield to the setting you want. Then take some measurements. Try to hold your meter in a single position for at least a few seconds in order to get the most accurate readings. That's it. It really is that simple. You'll see, as you move around and measure different areas, the levels will change. Now if you want to test how effective an EMF shielding product is, there are a few more steps. First, you'll want to test in an area that doesn't have too much background radiation. So take some measurements in your testing area and make sure the levels you're seeing aren't too high. The background radiation should be as close to zero as possible for your test. Next, you'll need a specific source of EMF, like a cell phone. So put your cell phone down on a table. Then, take and record some measurements. Next, take the shielding product you want to test, say, my SYB 5G phone shield and place it between your phone and the meter and test again. If the levels are lower, your shielding is working. It really is that simple to test EMF shielding products. So you can see for yourself if your protection is actually working. Well, that's it for this explainer video. I hope you've enjoyed it. For more tips about conducting at-home EMF testing, an explanation of units, and safety guidelines, check out my free book, which you can download from this URL.